So um, the topic I'm gonna teach about is uh, simple machines. So um, this is simple machines. It's a science Olympiad um, event where you just look at um, the machine, like simple machines. Um, it's, it's most recently a study event because um, it was run during COVID. It, it used to be a hybrid event. And then this talks about like simple machines, like I said. Um, simple machines has a lot of calculations and physics knowledge like will help a lot. Okay, so these are the rules. Um, you can just Google the, the rules if you want to read them carefully. I'll just um, quickly go through it. So um, there is a construction portion as hybrid. So um, which means that there's a device that you make before. And um, you basically make a simple lever and then you in the jet the objective is to determine like the ratios of unknown masses with the lever. So uh, in division B, it's a simple lever and in division C, it's a compound lever. And then the, then there's a written test. The written test is a multiple choice to a false completion or calculation question such problems. Um, it just, um, it tests on the five, six different simple machines there are, like levers, inclined planes, wedges, wheel and axle, pulleys and screws. And then scoring is you just um, get like the more, the more score, the better. Um, you just like get um, your multiple choice, your written test score and your device score, and you can add them up. Okay, so now types of machines. So there's six types of machines. There's the inclined plane, lever, wedge, wheel and axle, pulleys and screws. And then these are some important variables because um, they're used a lot. So there's um, the force, which is a capital F, and velocity, which is a lowercase v, speed, uh, is just the absolute value of the velocity, which is lowercase s, time, which is t, mass, m. Don't confuse mass with meters because um, meters is also a lowercase m. But if you're using m as a variable, it's going to be mass. If it's m as a unit, it's going to be meters. x is displacement or distance. Um, a is acceleration and theta is angle. And then gravity is usually rounded to 8.9.81 or 10. In most tests, it's 10 just to make calculations easier. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about mechanical advantage. This mechanical advantage is a topic where it determines how good your simple machine is and how well it functions. So it basically means that um that if you had like um, like a lever how how much more force you can use and you can input you can put out with just that lever so um the ideal mechanical advantage would be like the mechanical advantage in the in an ideal manner which so just the ratio of like the input distance and output distance. And it's like using ideal situations and untested ideas and like actual mechanical advantage. This is like what you can test in real life. Um, it would be the ratio of the output force over the input force. These are supposed to be equal, but they're only, they're equal when the situation is ideal. And it, you, this usually amplifies the force. So usually the mechanical advantage is positive, allowing the, so allowing you to put more force in with less. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the simple machines. This is the inclined plane. 
each uh, slanted surface. Um, that, so um, it helps you lessen the force used to push up, but it makes it longer for you to do the work. So if you had like a box, it would take you longer to push the box up the ramp than to push it up vertically, but you will have, it'll take you less force to push up the box. So the IMA of this incline plane would be the slant length over the rise. So the ideal mechanical advantage would just be this over that. Um, and then the angle over here is used to find like for forces. If like if you have an item on top of the incline plane. So for example, I will draw. Um, so this is an incline plane with a box on top. Force of gravity always acts downwards. So, so um, there's a force component pushing this way and then a force downwards because um, forces can be split into triangles. And then this, so then that tells you how much force is being pushed down the ramp. And then you can use that to calculate how fast it will go down the ramp. Or, and then, if, and then also tells you to calculate how much work or force you need to push it up the ramp. So that's how would you would use an incline plane. And just saying, um, if you guys have any questions, you can just put it in the chat. I will be looking at the chat. Um, someone asked, um, do you need to use friction? And yes, friction is needed if you like, friction is a thing you need to consider. But in most scenarios, um, the they will they'll neglect friction because it makes it a lot harder to do the physics. And uh, um, the V as the one over here, this rise, or the one before. Someone asked, "What does the V stand for?" Uh, Daniel, um, is it this V over here or is it the one in the before? Okay. So um, V is down for velocity. Um, it's just velocity is the is speed with a distance. So um, if you have like a speed, um, you can you can't you can um you can't say I have like I go like a negative ten speed. But like if you you can go negative in velocity, like as um a, a magnitude and a direction, so like speed is only the direct the magnitude, of and the velocity is a has a direction with it too. Okay. Okay. So now this is a wedge. It is similar to an incline plane. It's two incline planes stuck together, and then it helps split the force to both sides. It is used to separate forces. So if you put to them the back, it will, instead of having the force go downwards, it'll push it sideways. And then the IMA of this would be the length of the wedge over the width of the wedge. So this length over the width Okay, so um, how these work? Uh, okay, the IMA. Um, the IMA is the ideal mechanical advantage. So um, it 
it it would be like the ratio of the input distance over output distance. Um, but it's also like the ratio of the force over the input force, because these usually are equal. Um, uh, the IMA ideal mechanical advantage is how much work your simple machine is putting into the thing, like not physics work, but like how much, how well your machine will do. So like how much it amplifies the force. And so in this situation, the IMA would be the length over the width. So um, when you push like this way, um, then it will, it will like split the force. And like, and so instead of you having, instead of you having to push like sideways, this one wedge will just sim simplify what you're doing and you'll need to hit in one direction. Like to split this log, you only need to hit downwards. Okay, so um, some practice problems. You can just uh, send them to me in the chat. Everything is very straightforward. So an inclined plane has a height of five and a base of 12. Um, find the IMA. I'll give like a minute. And when you're giving me the answer, can you just put it as like a fraction or something? I don't want like uh, decimal numbers. Okay, um, a hint is the IMA would be the, the IMA of a uh, inclined plane is the di diagonal over the height. And for the second one, IMA is the length over the And I cannot share the slides, but if you want me to go back to any slide before, I can. And yes, please don't uh, send your answers to uh, the host right now because um, I cannot see those. Uh, the diagonal would be 13 if you use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, um, I've been getting a lot of correct answers. So, um, the IMA of the inclined plane would be 13 over five. because um, the IMA is the diagonal over the height. And with the Pythagorean theorem, you can find the diagonal to be 13. And the wedge 
the IMA of this wedge is just the, the length over the width is just 10 over one, which is 10. Okay. Now we can move on. This is a lever. So um, levers help you change the direction of the force you use as well as increase it. So there are three classes of levers. So there's the one with a fulcrum in the middle. This is class one lever. And the class two lever would be the one with the load in the middle. And class three lever would be the effort in the middle. Um, so a class one lever, you can like see this is like a seesaw and the fulcrum is in the middle. And then Uh, class two lever would be uh, wheelbarrow because like the full comes off the side and the class three lever would be like a pair of scissors not necessarily scissors like as more as in shears as like the scissors that like you have a joint here and you push down this way so um how you calculate um, the IMA of a lever is the effort arm over the load arm. So then the effort arm would be the distance between the effort point and the fulcrum. And the load arm would be the distance between the load point and the fulcrum. So in a class one lever, it'd be the, this distance. This would be the effort. This would be the effort arm, and this would be the load arm. Uh, in class two, the load arm would be here, while the effort arm would be this whole section. And in class three, the, the effort arm is only here, and the load arm is the whole section. Okay. And this is like a wheel and axle. This is pretty simple. It just helps to turn objects. So um, um, the IMA of this would be the radius of the wheel over the radius of the axle. So it'd be the, the distance of what you're spinning, like this distance, and then over the radius of the axle, so this distance. Um, how the wheel and axle works is that it makes it so you have to spin the wheel more to get the the bucket to move up, but it'll it'll be easier to move. Okay, so a um, more practice problems. So as in question three, um, assume this is an ideal situation. So the AMA is equal to the IMA.
so you know So for number three is slightly more difficult, in which the AMA, we have the AMA, oh, I cannot. The AMA is equal to the IMA. So that means the force input over the force output. No, other way around. Force output over the force input is equal to the load on over the effect time. Uh. Because, um, nope, I mix it up. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so um, that means that the ratio of this and this would be equal to this and that. Um, because I don't think so. um, this area would be around would have the same force as this side. So um, you could simplify this to the weight times the distance would equal on both sides. So yes, eight meters. Eight meters. And for four, um, the the we uh the IMA would just be the wheel diameter over the axle diameter, which then is just four twenty over twenty, which you get twenty one. Okay, so I'm um, moving on. Pulleys. Uh, I I don't. Andrew, Andrew, should we disable public chat? Because it kind of is getting a bit crazy. Um, so uh, if you guys keep on talking like a bit too much, I don't mind like slight chatting, but please don't like distract other people. Okay, so pulleys. Uh, I cannot send the presentation, but um, I can go back to the previous slides if you want. Mm. Uh, which slide do you want? Actually, no. I'll 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 come back to you afterwards. Uh, I I'll I'll first finish. Um, this is a pulley. Um, it's used to change direction of the force and less of the force used like most other simple machines. The IMA can't really be calculated because um, the distance doesn't matter, but um, you can count it. So in most simple pulleys, um, these are like mostly the simple pulleys, it's just how many like lines of string are between like the two pulleys. So um, this is a stationary pulley, which means it's attached to the uh, I'm just I'm currently going over that. Um, um, this is a stationary pulley, which is attached to like a wall and it can't move. And this is a moving pulley. So um, when you're counting, um, you count the 
the number of strings between the two pulleys. So um, as, you, as you can see, there's two strings here. So when you're pulling down this way, the force will get split up twice. So um, you get twice the force. And for this string, for this pulley, you have, you have three. Uh, oh, the wheel and axle, the IMA is just the radius of the wheel over the radius of the axle. Okay, um, so um, for these types, um, you just kind of count how many strings are in between, and that is how many times the force is split up. So you, so you just get that, that many more times the force. And so that's how pulleys work. And then these are screws. Screws are not on division B. It's only a div division C thing. And then screws are just inclined planes that spiral around a shaft. And then the IMA would be the circumference of the shaft over the pitch. And then the pitch is the number of screws the length of the screw over the number of threads. So um, finally you get the IMA would be the circumference of the shaft. So basically how, um, how much, how long this part is. And then over the length of the screw, which is this length. And then times the number of threads. So it's multiplied by how many times the the thread goes around. Mm -hmm. And then practice problem. I'm not going to have a screw practice problem just because it's not in division C. It's, it's, I mean, it's only in division C. Um, oh, no. Uh, this, the pitch of the screw is the length of the screw over the number of threads and this is each individual one is a thread. Okay. So for number five, you have you have a, a double tackle, which is this set of pulleys. And you have a 400 load hanging from it. So um, Newton's, this is, is the symbol for, is the unit for force. It's kilograms. Oh, I cannot. It's kilograms times meter per second squared. I'll give like a minute because this question is pretty simple, straightforward. Okay, I've gotten a few correct answers. So we first count how many, what's the, we first count the IMA of the double tackle, in which you can see there are four lines in between the two pulleys, the stationary pulley and the bottom pulley. So um, the IMA of the, the IMA would be equal to four. And the AMA is the output is equal to the output force over the input force. And in which, because I am as, we're assuming this is ideal, the IMA is equal to the AMA. So the output force, force which is 400 newtons, is equal to 
4 times the input force. So the input force is just 100 newtons. Mm, okay, so um, now we have a kahu in which Andrew will do share screen. Andrew. All right, give me a sec. Um, see simple machines start Let me share the screen as well. Oh, yeah, we can start. You push it. Okay, so the first couple of questions are just repeat questions, just to make sure you guys were paying attention. And I did give way too much time for every single question.
Uh, we can probably just stop the timer at like 20 because I did give way too much time. Uh, because, because these questions are repeats, I'm not going to explain. Uh, yeah, I said I gave way too much time for these questions because I kind of give like a minute to each because um, they sometimes, some of them might take a while. Uh, I'm going to explain this one afterwards if because it's not a repeat question. Okay, as a clarification, it's the whole arm, not just like the part I was showing in the picture. Uh, is it possible for you to show the image? Okay, so um, it's a class three lever because the fulcrum would probably be your in your elbow joint, and um, okay, can I annotate? No, I cannot. Okay, so um, your the the elbow joint is the fulcrum, and as the fulcrum. How do I do this? Mm. Well, um, because the elbow, the, your elbow joint is the fulcrum and the effort. So like the force you use is in the middle and you hold something in your hand. That would make it a class three lever. Mm. Yeah, we can go next. This one's also pretty straightforward, but I will still explain it afterwards. Okay, so um, a bicycle would be a complex machine. 
because I said there's only six types of simple machines, levers, levers, um, wedges, inclined planes, wheel and axle, pulleys and screws. As a bicycle is not in the list, it's complex because it's made out of mul multiple um, simple machines. Okay, so um, this I did not put in the slideshow, but I briefly talked about it. I think most of you got it correct. The two types of pulleys are fixed pulleys and movable pulleys. So ones that are fixed can't move and the ones that are movable can. What? Sorry, I pressed something wrong and then I ended this early. Sorry about it, sorry about it. Should we just move on or you want to break uh, it down? Uh, I guess we could. Or can we do it in the chat? I mean, if you, if you guys want to answer, you guys can just do it. Also, I spelled height wrong. It's spelled H I. Is there a break? Um, the break, uh, yeah, I'm going yeah. a little bit um, over. We're running time. a bit over, so you might want to wrap things up. Um, the break should be soon. Mm, I can probably do the next lesson just a bit faster. Um, it was supposed to end at 40. We're kind of eight minutes over. Uh, this pulley was also featured in another question. Jeffy's kind of sad without the music. I have my guarantee that for all future cahoots, you will have the music. Hmm. Uh, so we are we going to take our break? Let's do that. Okay. Uh, 10 minute break, come back at like five.